Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, today we're going to go through a proof related to compactness, which essentially says that let X and Y be compact, then X cross Y is compact uh, under the product topology. So it looks to be pretty straightforward, but actually coming up with this proof, as I have experienced in my own years uh, doing math, was not so easy. Uh, so quickly, let's define the product topology. So the product topology can be defined in, in many different ways, but the way I'm going to define it for you right now is it's the topology generated by uh, the set of all open cylinders in X cross Y, okay? And so mathematically, I'm going to have the set of all inverse projections of U such that, uh, such that, U sub i open x sub i and i within i, okay? So essentially, I'm going to look at the set. If I, if I want to look at just x specifically, okay, let's look at the family of open cylinders on x. And essentially, any open set on x, I'm going to take the inverse projection of that open set. So it's literally going to look like an open cylinder. You can just imagine this being um, open on the boundaries here. And, uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing for Y. So I'm going to take the set of all open cylinders in Y. And then I'm going to use these to generate the topology. So essentially, I'm, there, I'm thereby going to close this, um, this family of sets under countable unions and finite intersections. Okay. And by doing that, I generate a topology on X cross Y. Now let's go into the proof. So to prove this, I'm going to first, uh, any compactness proof, not everyone, but I'm going to let, uh, let you be an open cover of X cross Y. Okay. And so we, know that U is a family of sets, could be infinitely many sets that, uh, that, that are open and that they cover X cross Y. And we want to show that there exists some finite sub cover um, of U and that would prove compactness. So if we fix uh, Y not within Y, okay? So let me just draw a picture here. I have a box and I have some cover Okay, and now I'm going to fix a why not here. And I'm just going to look at this line. And I'm going to look at the set of all points, uh, y, x, comma, why not, so that x is within x, okay. And so this set, if I intersect this set, with, uh, with my family of open sets here, I'm go this set also has to be covered. And um, based on the product topology, the intersection of, of every set in the open cover has to be open in this X, Y not, okay? So essentially, if I take, if I take a, the intersection of some open set with this line, it has to be open with respect to the topology on X, okay? And that's just due to the topological definition of the product topology, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use compactness because I know that this set is essentially isomorphic to X, right? I, I have the whole set of X and then I've just mapped X to the set of all points X, Y not, which is a direct isomorphism. So the, the topology on X should also apply to the topology on X comma Y not. And therefore, we we have the same notions of compactness, and so I'm going to take a uh, take uh, the finite subcover F, and I'm going to call this set um, A. So take the finite subcover F F of A, and I'll just label this for you here. And now, if I take the finite subcover of F of A, okay, then F is just some um, finite union of open sets, I'll call them U sub i's here. And uh, 
these sets cover the line um, x comma y naught. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe that since this subcover is finite, okay, this is the critical, the crucial idea to solve this proof, okay? So since the cover is finite, if I look at its union, so let me draw a set A here, and we have some cover, say of a bunch of open sets, all these are open sets and then I've taken their union, right? And now what I essentially claim is that because this cover is uh, consists of finitely many open sets, I can actually choose a neighborhood around why not. And this has to cover, there's some neighborhood such that, um, such that our open cover F covers um, an open cylinder centered at why not. So if I wanted to be more explicitly explicit here, I would say um, there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that um, the set of all uh, x comma y naught plus delta such that x is within x, excuse me, x is within x and delta absolute value is less than epsilon. This little open cylinder centered around our line A has to be covered by F. And this is just due to the finite nature of the open cover of F. And if this were not true, okay, if this statement were not true, then essentially F would have to um, be like explicitly covering just A, right? And therefore it would have to contain some of its boundary points because A would be on its boundary and therefore um, it could not be an open cover. And so I'll let you think about why that is. But the basic idea is that if we couldn't find this neighbor, this open cylinder that is a neighborhood of A, if that didn't exist, then F could not be an, a finite open cover because it would have to contain some of its boundary with, and its boundary would actually belong to A as well. Okay. Um, and so now that we've taken this um, open cylinder, we are able to like apply the crucial idea of the proof, which is that I'm going to do this. So repeat this process for all, why not? Okay. And so essentially, if we go back to our original diagram here, I've created an, a finite open cover of some neighborhood of, of this set. And now I'm gonna do it for like every single Y um, horizontally here. And I'm going to have this finite cover, cover F sub Y for each value of Y that actually um, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence with this open cylinder A centered at Y. So getting a bit wordy here. It's a, I really need to work on that, but anyways, uh, so we're going to repeat the process for all Y within Y and we create, we generate a finite open cover F sub Y, um, that covers some open cylinder. and we'll call the open cylinder A sub Y centered at Y. Okay. And so now we repeat the process for all Y and notice that these open cylinders, their projection onto the Y axis is just a neighborhood of Y. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cover of Y that is just the projection of all these open cylinders onto the Y axis. So, take the cover of Y formed by the projection onto Y of A sub Y. And now by compactness of Y, we can generate a finite um, sub cover, right?
since I don't want to use F, I'll use G, okay? But now, observe that um, this G is just a union of, what did I use for the, yeah, it's just a union of F sub Y sub I from I equals one to M, let's say. So it's some finite union of our FYIs and then these FYIs are just um, finite covers of the line um, of the line sorry, X, Y, I. Okay. So these are just finite covers of the horizontal line at Y is equal to Y, I. And so if I expand this out, I'm going to get the union from I equals one to M union from I equal from J, I could say J equals one to N of U sub J. And now we can just see that essentially G is also a finite union of open sets and it covers X cross Y by our construction. And therefore we've constructed a finite subcover and so since G is finite, um, X cross Y is compact. All right. And obviously this is just me hand wavily going through the proof, like very, very informally, right? Super hand wavy. And so it'd be a good exercise to like write it down and try to put it into your own words and see if you can bring all the ideas together. Or if you're just here for entertainment, you know, grab your, grab your popcorn and your, um, and your, hopefully your water, or maybe your soda. And uh, let's move on to the next proof that I'll do tonight, which is going to be uh, involving a measure on the rationals.